Okay, bottom of the hour, we'll talk to Ty Bollinger about his uh, cancer webinar, uh, can uh, Quest for the Cure, he's calling it. And then uh, we'll also talk about his, his book, Monumental Myths of the Modern Medical Mafia, and discuss all things cancer and health-related. That's at the bottom of the hour. All right, we've been talking about the smallest units of life, cells and their building blocks, molecules. Molecules themselves compose of atoms. So you got atoms, then you got molecules, then you got cells, and all as it regards health and disease. And this isn't only about appreciating the absolutely mind boggling, incredible nature of the tiny infinitesimal scales that our lives are based on. Our lives are really based on these scales that are millions, billions, trillions of times smaller than we are. And, and that's amazing in and of itself. But we're not here to talk, as amazing as it is, and I get blown away every time I think about this. But we're not here necessarily to talk about the amazingness of the tiny scales that our lives are based on. This is all about health and disease. And understanding, or at least acknowledging our bodies at these micro, 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 sub-microscopic levels is absolutely vital if we are going to be able to master our health and vitality and avoid the exploitative and predatory and futile trap of the modern medical model. Because at the end of the day, it's our lack of appreciation of our bodies at the cell level, at the molecule level, even at the tissue and organ level. It's our lack of appreciation of our bodies at these levels that makes us pray for drug companies, for doctors, for insurance companies, for pharmacists, for the medical model that sees our illnesses and our diseases and our misery and our sicknesses as a profit center, as the goose that laid the golden eggs. If you're sick and you're going to the doctor and you're going to get your drugs and you're participating in Obamacare, please understand that there are corporate moguls, there are CEOs who see your sickness and see your, uh, the misery of you and your family as a profit center. And if that doesn't tick you off, I don't know what would. Last we spoke, we we're addressing the humble little molecule, trillions of times smaller than the cell. And then the cell itself, which is comprised of these tiny little atomic structures we call molecules. And just as molecules have a personality, and just like molecules communicate to each other, cells have their own personality, and cells communicate with each other as well. And the personality of a cell is going to depend on the type of molecules that it contains. And cells aren't mere molecular composites. They're intelligent. They're informed. They're animal-like. Everything a cell does has a type of logic, has a type of reason. And a kind of logic and a, and a reason that serves to maintain its organization and its structure and its functionality, the things it does. A cell is logical. Even if it's misbehaving, even if it's rogue, it's still a logical being. It's an intelligent being with a consciousness. And this is so important. There's no bad cells. You don't need to kill cells. Killing cells is killing ourselves. There's no bad cells. There's only cells that are responding to their environment in a way that serves that cell best. Even if it doesn't serve the organism, us, as a whole, it serves the cell best. Even a cancer cell is a cell that is operating in its own interest, perhaps in a sociopathic way where it's not listening to other cells. That's really what a cancer cell is. A cancer cell is a sociopathic cell that doesn't listen to other cells. That's simply what it is. But it's not listening to other cells because it's desperate, because it's been starved for so long, it's been suffocated for so long, and it's so toxic that it has, it's at its wit's end. It doesn't know what else to do. A cancer cell is a cell that has reverted back into an old way of operating, a primitive way of operating for its survival. It's not a bad cell. It's a cell that doesn't know what else to do. And this is what all cells are when we're, uh, when, when we're sick. That's, this is, all cells when we're sick are simply operating in their own self-interest. They're not bad cells. They're just cells that are desperate. And poisoning the cell, which is what drugs do, is not an appropriate or helpful response. If our cell's behavior is causing us distress or causing us illness, it's not our cell's fault. Poisoning the cell with drugs or with any of the medical techniques that, uh, that doctors in the medical model love so much is not the right response. It's not a helpful response, except perhaps in a temporary fashion, in a state of acute emergency, it's the environment that the cell is residing in that is dysfunctional. Why is this important? Because in large part, we have control over that environment through diet, through nutrition, through lifestyle, through detoxification, through mental means, through emotional means, even spiritual means. All of these are ways that we control the environment that the cell is sitting in, and ultimately we can control the behavior of the cell. 
Cells are in constant flux responding to the environment that they're sitting in. Far from being static structures, they're dynamic. They're endlessly and eternally dynamic. They're living, transforming, endlessly morphing beings that are making and breaking down millions upon millions upon millions of molecules every second. If we could enter into a cell in our mind's eye, and if we could imagine all of the molecular activity as different colored lights, we would be imagining a kaleidoscope of the most mind-blowing and overwhelming beauty and complexity, pulsing and blinking and flashing psychedelic multicolored Fourth of July fireworks exploding with an intelligence and a coordination, forming these intricate and intelligent patterns. If we watch long enough, we could begin to understand and read these patterns by their colors and frequencies, and we could determine everything there is to know about the cell, what kind of molecules it has, how many molecules it has, what the cell's eating, what it's producing, how it's interpreting the environment, and how the cell was feeling, and perhaps how it was even thinking. And all of this is possible because the cell is an exquisitely logical and conscious being. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back on the bright side. Our number is 855-660-4261. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're going to be talking to Ty Bollinger in the bottom of the hour about his webinar series, Quest for the Cure. That's a cancer webinar series. And then also, uh, also his book, Cancer Outside the Box, and his new book, Monumental Myths of the Modern Medical Mafia. Ty Bollinger is a prolific health advocate, good friend. He writes a lot of books, man. I'm, I, wish I, I wish I knew how to write a lot of books like Ty. Anyway, we're going to be talking about his stuff here at the bottom of the hour. So if you've got questions for us, about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, skincare products, the longevity business, the longevity products, something you've heard on the program, you have a success story you want to share, 855-660-4261 is our number, and we'll get your phone calls here in just a second. I want to just, uh, well, you know what, we'll finish this up tomorrow. We'll continue talking about cells and the cell's relationship to health, especially the outer portion of a cell that we talk about a lot on this program, the cell membrane. The cell membrane is not just the brain of a cell, but it's also a storage depot for fatty materials and uh, fat metabolism and fat chemistry and fat digestion and fat intake is one of the most important aspects of keeping the cell and the cell membrane and ultimately keeping us healthy. We will talk about that tomorrow as we continue on the bright side. Let's uh, let's hit our phones. 855-660-4261 is our number. Jim in Ohio. What's going on? Welcome to the bright side. Hey, Ben. It was what's great up? to see you last Thursday in Indianapolis. Oh, thank great you. Time. Thank you so yeah, much. I was supposed to ask you this question back then, and I forgot. But okay. basically, I've got a, a longevity um, client who has been on Bosomax and Actinel years ago, and she just got done with two years of Forteo. Okay, and, and now her bones are super strong. Now, she, now her bones yeah. are really, really strong, right? Because <laughs> she got those right. prescription and drugs. No more osteoporosis. Now the doctor wants to start her on reclass. Oh, really? Because she's, she's having second thoughts. She's, <laughs> but she wanted to get. A definitive answer from you. <laughs> now, you know, I know this is your friend, it's not you, but just w what is the logic to using a drug to build bones? Help me. As a, as a well, layperson, I understand you're a layperson. There really is none. There isn't, it's right? Just, that's what the doctor said. It's yeah, crazy. Man. It's crazy. And let me tell you something. Among the most toxic and ugly and hideous drugs of all drugs you can buy and use are the so-called osteoporosis drugs like Reclast and Fosamax and Boniva. They're awful, hideous, hideous drugs. There's a lot of nasty drugs out there, clearly. But among the, the, uh, the top top uh, echelon, if you will, of nasty drugs are the anti or the uh, uh, bis phosphonate drugs. That's what they call them, these anti-osteoporosis right. drugs. So osteoporosis, first of all, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of controversy on what exactly osteoporosis is, if it's a real disease state. Uh, and, and there's a lot of medical folks, including Dr. David Brownstein, who writes in his book, uh, Natural Therapies, or Drugs That Don't Work and Natural Therapies That Do. There's a lot of controversy on whether indeed there is uh, osteoporosis is, a, is a, real, a real disease. Fact of the matter is, is we get weak and our bones get weak and our muscles get weak secondary to our bodies falling apart. 
degenerate, uh, our bodies degenerate. Osteoporosis is just a manifestation of a body that's breaking down. Osteoporosis is arthritis of the bones. It's diabetes of the bones. It's Parkinson's disease of the bones. It's the same thing that's happening everywhere in the body. It happens in the bones. It happens in the brain. It happens in the different organs and glands and muscles and connective tissue. We just fall apart. We melt. We dissolve. Like the Wicked Witch in the Wicked Witch of the West in the Wizard of Oz, where uh, she gets they throw water on her and she goes, "I'm melting." Right? That's what happens to us. We melt. We dissolve. How can we dissolve? Secondary to our lifestyle. Period. End of story. Osteoporosis, dissolving bones, or dissolving any part of the body is secondary to lifestyle. Secondary to poor nutrition. Secondary to lack of nutrition. Secondary to lack of exercise. Secondary to emotional and mental issues as well. So what do you do if you're truly interested in building strong bones and you don't want to be on drugs? You don't have to be. And I'm guilty of blaming doctors and the medical model. You know, I rip on them all the time. I understand this, but it's not their fault. This is what they're trained to do. This is how they operate. So it's, it doesn't do us any good to rail about the medical model. What we have to do is we have to take the ball into our own court. So what do you do with osteoporosis? Well, believe it or not, we started talking about osteoporosis back in October, and all this talk about protein and essential fats and cell chemistry really, really started when we started talking about osteoporosis. Osteoporosis can be reversed using building strategies. Number one, nutrition. That means protein. Your bones are mostly protein. They're not mostly calcium. Calcium creates the hardness, but your bones are mostly made up of protein, connective tissue protein, collagen. That means get yourself on a whey protein supplement. Step number one for dealing with osteoporosis. Can't do whey protein, egg protein, meat protein, fish protein, protein. And you also got to make sure that you're digesting and absorbing and utilizing protein. That means digestive enzymes for most people. Get on the ultimate enzymes with protein. Every time you do your protein and you want about, uh, about uh, roughly half a gram per pound of body weight per day. That means if you weigh 120 pounds, you want 60 grams of protein a day. That's more than the food that than, uh, the government will tell you and than most medical professionals will tell you. But considering the bulk of your body is made up of protein, protein is the raison d'etre, the, the reason for existence of all cells, 80% or more of you is protein, it makes a lot of sense to make sure that you're getting extra protein. So around 60 grams or so of protein, that's two scoops, you can do three scoops, and you want to work out while you do your protein. Protein can get turned into fat. If your body's not using protein, it will store that protein as fat. So you got to use the protein. So t ingesting protein and using protein. Uh, Weight-bearing exercises are extremely important for osteoporotic patients, for building bones, and the combination of protein, uh, ingestion of protein, and uh, and uh, uh, working out, weight-bearing exercises is very, very helpful for osteoporosis. Now, now, when you're doing your uh, protein, uh, when you're doing your protein, your amino acids, uh, your protein, and your digestive enzymes, try to focus on the bone-building collagen proteins. Chicken soup or bone soup, anything with bones is going to be a good osteoporosis type of protein. Bone soup is awesome. It's got the amino acids specifically for building bone. Then there's vitamin C. You can't make bone collagen. You can't make any collagen without vitamin C. I'd be using 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. I'd be making sure I was on the healthy start pack, sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine as well. And then minerals like calcium and magnesium are also going to be important. Zinc is a very important mineral for, for bone health, 50 milligrams of zinc a day. Sugar will counteract zinc, and sugar will also counteract uh, uh, vitamin C. So if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates and sugars, you need more vitamin C, you need more zinc, and also sugar has an inflammatory effect that can cause inflammation at the bone cell level, and that can disrupt bone cell growth as well. So staying off the sugar, staying off the refined and processed foods is absolutely vital. If there's any digestion, Digestive problems, you got to link those up to foods and then eliminate those foods. Essential fatty acids, very, very important for all building, for especially for building collagen and building bone. Get on the ultimate EFAs. That's the healthy start pack, Jim. Osteomag, essential fatty acids, beyond tangy tangerine, throw in some protein, make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes, get in the gym, and you don't need Fosamax, you don't need a doctor, you don't need anything except your own lifestyle choices and good nutrition for dealing with osteoporosis. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for being here. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome a good friend to the bright side, a prolific author, as well as a tireless health advocate, anti-cancer advocate specifically. Some of you know who I'm talking about, Ty Bollinger, author of Cancer, uh, Step Outside the Box, Monumental Myths of the Modern Medical Mafia. He's going to tell us about his new webinar, 
which started yesterday, The Quest for the Cures. Welcome, Ty. Good to talk to you. Hey, thanks, Ben. I appreciate you having me on today, my friend. All right, so The Quest for the Cures. This is exciting. It's an investigative report. Docu- you called it a... a I forget, what did you docu- call it? Docu-series. Like, docu-series, it right. Docu-series. Yeah. And it's, it's free yeah. documentaries. Every day there's going to be a new documentary, and they're all about cancer. You've got some really neat people that you're interviewing. Tell us a little bit about the program. Yeah, I got uh, approached a couple months ago by a couple friends and said, hey, we'd, we'd like for you to travel the country, interview doctors and patients, and get the scoop on natural cancer treatments that are working. We'll put it into a documentary miniseries. We'll stream it live for free and uh, let the whole world watch it. And I said, I like that idea. Let's do it. So we did. Mm-hmm. And I traveled and, and just hit up a whole bunch of different people, uh, doctors, not patients. Big, big names, actually. Uh, let me ask you about a couple of these guys, if it's okay. Yeah. One of my sure. favorite anti-cancer or, or uh, uh, ca- cancer uh, medicine spokespeople, I suppose you'd say, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez. He's, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez, he's written a lot about pancreatic enzymes and cancer. Tell us yeah. a little bit yeah. about Dr. Nick. Dr. Nick is a great guy, man. He's, he's just a really, for being as well-known as he is, he is just your humble servant is, is the best way to describe him. Man. He wants to help people. He, um, I, I got a chance to, to go up there to New York City to interview him and, and his partner, Dr. Linda Isaacs, and they do treat the cancer with pancreatic enzymes very, very successfully. Nick shared with me a couple stories that were just that blew my mind. He's got one lady that he actually talked to on the phone while I was there in his office that is pancreatic cancer patient that is 32 years out from diagnosis. 32 That's unheard years. of. That's the deadliest it, of all cancers. Typical lifespan. Is. What is it, a year, for, for typically? Less than a year. Less than a year, Less right? Less than a year if you treat it conventionally. He's got a lady 32 years out. Dr. Isaacs has a lady that's 14 years out. Dr. Gonzalez has the, the several others that wow. are over 10 years out. It's just really amazing the, the success that they have had with that, that are they, protocol. Are they using the pancreatic enzymes for other cancers, too, or is it just pancreatic cancer? They treat all kinds of cancers, not just pancreatic. They've had a lot of success with pancreatic cancer, but uh, Nick was telling me about a patient of his that's an invasive breast cancer, stage 4 invasive breast cancer patient, 26 years out using their protocol. So they wow. use it on all, all different types of cancer. So anybody can just go out and make an appointment to see Dr. Nick or Dr. Isaacs? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how much. I don't know how much uh, you know they're taking new patients at this point. I know they're really, really busy because they're so they're so prominent in the field. But yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think the only thing with with Dr. Nick and, and and Dr. Linda is that if you've gone through chemo and radiation, that's one of the things that they that they look at. I don't know that they take a lot of patients that have already gone through the traditional uh-huh. treatments because of the fact that they just devastate the immune system so so much. Got it. So somebody's newly diagnosed or, or with cancer, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez would be somebody that they'd want to look into, at least his work. Well, at, absolutely. I mean, that's, he, that's one person that I would look, in, that I would look at personally. He's, he knows his stuff. I mean, the guy is just a, in a good way, in a loving way, because he's a good friend of mine. He's, a, he's just a science nerd. Uh, he really is. He reads, his relaxing afternoon for him is to go read through medical journals. Love he's it. that kind of guy. I mean, he's that's just how you have to brilliant. be. You know, that, that, Ty, that's how you have to be, right? I mean, if you're going to be participating in healthcare, you got to be up. You got to love to be up on things. You got to be passionate about it, right? Yes, yes, and that's exactly the way that Dr. Nick and and Dr. Linda are. They 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 are up on things. Nick told me a story about Steve McQueen. You know, Dr. Dr. Gonzalez. He actually uses a protocol that was developed by Dr. Donald Kelly, who was a dentist in Dallas. That this pancreatic enzyme protocol. And Kelly was the one that was actually blamed for being the quack that killed Steve McQueen, if you remember this back I in the I do remember. It. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so, so anyway, Dr. Gonzalez told us the real story of what happened. And the, the bottom line is that um, the conventional doctors tried to treat his mesothelioma with radiation. And radiation, is ne- there's not one case in the history of the world ever, <clears throat> excuse me, that radiation has worked on mesothelioma. So they tried to do this. They devastated his immune system. He then went to Kelly. Kelly began to turn around his cancer. All his markers were down, his tumors, his tumors were shrinking and or were necrotic. And they went in to take out one of the tumors, and he actually died from an aneurysm. So he did not die from the cancer treatment. He, died from the, he did he not di- actually die from cancer. He died from the radiation? He, he died from an aneurysm that resulted from a surgery to take out the uh-huh. tumors that were actually necrotic. They were dead. They were dead tumors, and they were dead because Dr. Kelly's protocol was actually curing him of cancer. Wow. But Kelly got blamed as the quack that killed Stephen Queen, but the, the reality <laughs> Not, is the surgery killed him. Right. Not surprising. So, uh, uh, see, G. Edward Griffin, I read his stuff all the time. What, uh, he, I imagine he talked to you about the cancer industry, correct? 
He did. He, he talked to me. It was really fascinating meeting uh, Mr. Griffin. He's a big hero of mine, not only with his World Without Cancer book about vitamin B17, but also with his The Creature from Jekyll Island. Right. Classic. And so I, I had the privilege of meeting him in his home, meeting met his wife and his, his assistant, Joan Hunter. She's a real fabulous lady that actually is... Um, She's having some issues now because of living next to a, a nuclear waste dump, and she's gotten some tumors because of that. And she's actually st- suing Boeing, who is who is dumping a bunch of nuclear waste. And anyway, that's a whole other story. But I met him at his house, and he did talk about the pharmaceutical industry, the cancer industry. He talked a lot about vitamin B17, laetrile, and the research that he's done on that amazing treatment for cancer. What's your take on laetrile? I think it's a great adjunct treatment. But it's not a standalone, and here's why. Laetrile is very good at killing cancer cells. It's, it's the selective toxicity towards cancer cells. It, the, the cyanide and the benzaldehyde team up, and they, they're unlocked at the cancer cells with the poison or with an enzyme called beta-glucosidase, causes them to kill the cancer cells. And then the rhodonese, which is an enzyme in the rest of your body, causes that poison to turn into a natural pain-killing substance. It's really remarkable the way that it kills cancer cells. But it's not a good immunotherapy. So if you've gotten cancer as a result of having an immune system that's compromised, the, the laetrile or the B17 will, will kill the cancer, but much the same way that chemotherapy will kill the cancer cells. Mm. If you don't do anything to correct the imbalance in the immune system, then you'll probably end up getting a recurrence of cancer. So that's why I always say, you know, B17 is great, eat the apricot pits, but do something that's going to modulate your immune system, clean up your diet, do all these other factors as right. well, because you've you got to use a multi-pronged approach. What's your take on the cause? I, I mean, I'm, I know you're not a, a medical professional necessarily, but you're just as well-read as anybody else. What's your take on the cause? Is there an ultimate cause, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, and in, in, in the American Cancer Society agrees with me on this, even though you don't hear this from conventional doctors, and even though the ACS is not the, 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 the end-all for, for research, they actually have this posted on their website. There's a PDF document that's entitled Cancer Facts and Figures 2013 that's up on the ACS website. And it says that upwards of 95% of cancers today are caused by exposure to environmental toxicities, the lifestyle choices, radiation, those kind of things. Only 5%, amazing? according to this document, is, has any genetic factor. So we're looking at environmental causes, toxicities. That's what's causing our immune systems to be compromised, and that's what's resulting in cancer. Now, I wonder if, it, if 95% of cancers are caused by lifestyle issues. I wonder where chronic degenerative disease fits into that. Probably the same thing, no? I would think so. I would think it would fit into the same thing. I mean, look, Ben, when you look at 100 years ago, we have, we have stories of doctors that would, go, that would go see a cancer patient in, in the hospital and take their team of doctors with them and say, look, be sure that you look closely at this case because you might not see another case of cancer again. <laughs> and then today it's one in two men, one in three women. Man. That's but crazy. changed the environment. We're talking to Ty Bollinger about his webinar series, The Truth About Cancer. If you're interested in joining, head over to PharmacistBen.com. Click on the Truth About Cancer banner, and you'll go to a web page where you can sign up to check out uh, the Quest for the the Cures webinar series. We'll continue with Ty Bollinger when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. All right, we're back on The Bright Side talking to Ty Bollinger about the quest for the cures, the first ever investigative report documentary miniseries on cancer. Ty went around the country interviewing all kinds of cancer-fighting heroes, Mike Adams and Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez and uh, Linda Isaacs, G. Edward Griffin, Burton Goldberg. I've been reading Burton Goldberg stuff for many years, for 20-plus years. He must be 90 years old or something, Burton Goldberg. You know- yeah, Burton, actually, he's 87, and man, I tell you what, I hope I have the energy and the enthusiasm and the passion that he does at 87. His, nice. his was a really, really good interview. Boy, he's, he, gets, he gets really upset when he starts talking about the way that they're withholding treatments from people and, and basically killing people by not giving them information that they needed to properly treat cancer. I, lo- I love Burton. That's awful. He used to live in Aspen. He's not in Colorado anymore, is he? I think he's up, uh, up in San Francisco now. I think okay. he's in the San Francisco Bay Area. All right, so let's talk some logistics here. Um, if somebody wants to, is, is int- well, first of all, Ty, before you get, get into that, what, yeah. is, what would your recommendation be? Somebody's diagnosed, God forbid, with cancer. What would, what's the first thing they should do? Um, you know, just what I tell people generally is that if you're diagnosed with cancer, and, you know, of course, I have to do this with a caveat that I'm not recommending anything because I'm not a doctor. Um, but I'll always tell them, look, I'm not recommending anything, but if it were me in your situation, 
Um, you've, you've most likely been diagnosed because of some kind of lifestyle choice. So you need to figure out what that is, whether, and it's not always. I mean, a lot of times it is, but not always. But you need to figure out if it's because of a poor diet that you've been eating. It may be exposure to, to radiation or electromagnetic frequencies from where you're living. If so, you need to move. You, know, you look at, and try to find the cause. And there may be multiple causes, but you need to clean that up. Most people, probably I'd say 90% of people, need to clean up their diet immediately. Because even though doctors are not going to tell you that diet has anything to do with cancer, your nutritional choices, it actually does. It has a big part to play in the cancer equation. So you need to clean up your diet, and you need to start detoxifying your body, and you need to build your immune system so they can do what it's supposed to do. Those are three big steps. And if people do that, if they can clean up the diet, begin to exercise, begin to sweat, begin to, begin to detoxify, and then build that immune system, they got a really good chance at beating cancer. And it's, it, this, is, this is an epidemic, Ben. It's, it's something that's going to face, according to the American Cancer Society, in that same document that I referred to earlier, they say that one in two men are alive today and one in three women are going to face a cancer diagnosis. So this is mm. an epidemic. And so you need to be prepared with knowledge for when that diagnosis comes. And, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most important things, though, to start with is to clean up that diet, especially when we're talking about processed foods, Ben, because of the right. genetically modified organisms. Did anybody talk about any of these, uh, any of your uh, interviewees talk about caloric restriction? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Casey Krejci, who's a good buddy of mine, he owns livingfuel.com. He's out in California. That's one of the big, one of his pillars for overall nice. health and well-being is, is calorie restriction while getting Adequate nutrition. nutrition. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's, I would have to say, in my opinion, from a physical perspective, that is the single most effective way, uh, uh, strategy for longevity as well as uh, fighting Absolutely. degenerative disease yeah. and cancer. We eat yeah. too much yeah. food. We eat way we too much food. We're the starving we eat obese. Way too many calories and too little nutrition. Yeah, and there's a lot of there's a lot of unfortunately there's a lot of marketing interests and and food processor interests and and uh, industrial and economic and financial interests to compelling us to eating foods. We're, we're hypnotized into eating foods. No. Yeah, we are. We are, and 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 many of the foods that we're eating are actually addictive, and so we're being hypnotized to eat them, and then we're being hooked on them once we start eating them because they they have addictive chemicals in them that make us want to yeah. keep coming back. Yeah, they got food scientists who know more about our brains and our appetite centers and and the reasons we eat, the, our, our our drives, our appetite drives, and we do, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the one of the experts, and I can't remember who who it was, on this uh, mini series said, "We need to stop." living to eat and we need to start eating to live very nicely said all right so somebody wants to check out your uh, check out the webinar series they can go over to pharmacistben.com uh, click on the, the blue banner on the on the right hand side of the page the truth about cancer and then what happens next they're going to be taken to our website the truth about cancer they'll enter their name and email address and then they'll receive a link each day for the next six days it's, it began last night now that you didn't if you if you missed it last night, no big deal. You can you, we put it on YouTube so you can catch up, and then tonight and then through uh, Sunday night. Each night, tonight, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we got the the next six days, and it's going to be airing live, and you'll receive a link in your email to where you can you can watch the stream, and it's absolutely free. Now you now you've talked. Uh, there's like 30 people you've talked to. No, uh, 25 or 30. Yeah, I interviewed, people? I interviewed actually over 30 people. We got 29 or 30 people on the website, but there's more interviews than that. So interviewed a ton of people, a lot of medical doctors, a lot of scientists, and we have a lot of interviews with people that have treated cancer naturally because what we wanted to do on the last day, which is this Sunday, is we're going to have a day just dedicated to people that are survivors, and we've got video interviews with a ton of people that are survivors, and that's National Cancer Survivor Day, so it works out nicely. That's perfect. Now, what is the one thing all of these great health advocates have in common? Is there one thing that they all have in common, Dr. Jockers and Goldberg and uh, uh, A.J. Lanigan and Mike Adams and all those guys? Is there one thing that they have in common? Yeah, you know, I, I guess the one thing, maybe a couple things that I got across the board from everyone is you've got to change what you're putting in your body, and you've got to you've got to modulate your immune system to where it does the job that it's supposed to do, and that's across the board. Everybody said you got to change the diet, you got to get the immune system to function, which seems basic. It's but when you look at it. the American diet, uh, people it may be basic, but people aren't following it. Were any of these guys in, uh, supporting chemotherapy in any way, or, or any of the medical uh, strategies? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, Burton Goldberg supports yeah. what's called IPTLD, insulin potentiated targeted low dose, 
which is uh, chemotherapy, but it's potentiated with insulin. So you use a, a like a one tenth oh, dose. Oh, interesting. And it's also yeah. So they, and that that works that works with certain cancers very well. And and also there's uh, you know a lot of testing that's being done over in Germany and Greece now that will they will test for this IPTLD, but they'll find out what kind of chemotherapy would work best on your particular cancer. So now you're not only using a one tenth dose, so you don't have the hair loss and the nausea. But you're actually using a chemo that has been genetically tested to show that it would work better on your type of cancer. So there's a lot of different ways that you can you can t- use chemotherapy, but in a targeted dose, and it doesn't give you the side effects. Okay, so what's the one thing in common that cancer survivors have? Or the one thing things? that all of the cancer survivors that I interviewed, to without uh, without exception, they all immediately changed their diet when they got diagnosed, and they cleaned wow. up their diet, and that's across the board. Organic. They quit eating the junk. They quit eating the processed food. They cut out sugar wow. almost to a T. Every one of them said, "I cut out sugar because I found out that cancer loves sugar." You heard. I heard you talking about that earlier. Cancer cells are they, they generate energy via fermentation. Their right. their respiratory mechanism has changed due to the environment, and so right. they pleomorphed. And so that's the key. You, if you want to kill the cancer, get rid of the food that it feeds on, and, they, and cancer feeds on sugar. And these are people who actually remitted their, their their cells went from cancer cells to regular cells. They that's an amazing thing. Back. Yeah, that, that's an amazing that's an amazing phenomenon, Ty. The, the, the cells is. actually went from being normal cells to cancer cells, and then they reverted back to being normal cells. Absolutely, yeah. Because what they've done is, is as you said earlier, and you were dead on accurate, they, they've they have pleomorphed, they have changed because of the environment. They're living right. in a toxic environment, and they're just doing the best they can to stay alive. And as a result, they've had to change the way that they produce energy right. because you've got you've got the sea of lactic acid and right. and, uh, and and an environment that, that a normal cell just doesn't live in well. So the cancer cells change. They're desperate. They're at their wits' end. I, I think of yeah. just this, these cells. They have no other way of being. And then we blame the cells and we kill the cells, which is of course killing us. When we kill our cells, we're killing ourselves. Our cells are us. Your lung cancer cells are your lung cells or our lung cells. All right. How about uh, last? We get, we got to wind down here. Uh, uh, how about the spiritual or the mental or the emotional aspect? What do these the doctors and the patients say about that? The, the patients who've remitted. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's huge as well, is the, is the mental aspect. As a matter of fact, I got from more than one doctor that they, they, they were quoted as saying, when you go into an oncologist's office and you've been diagnosed with cancer and they tell you you'll be dead in three months, you'll be mm. dead in six months, that they should be charged with a crime. It's a curse. Because what they've done is they've just de- they have just sentenced you to death because right. the mind has so much power over the body. Isn't that interesting? Uh, you know, they, they should, you should never have an oncologist that tells you you'll be dead. How do they know? They're not God. Right. That's they have right. no idea. And they, and, they, and, uh, they literally sentenced you. They've, they've, they've emitted a sentence out of their mouth and, and compelled your body in, on some level or you on some level to die. Yes. They've cursed you. They have. Yeah. They have. And I got a, a story from Dr. Uh, Ra- Rashid Buttar out in North Carolina, very successful at treating cancer in his clinic there. He know he knows numerous patients that were that were told by their oncologist that he could be dead in three months, six months, whatever. They went to Doctor Bukar. He healed their cancer, but they still ended up dying of something oh else on those days. That's incredible, Ty. Now thank you, mind. Ty, bro. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. It's a, you're doing wonderful, amazing, beautiful work. It's the truth about cancer. Uh, Ty Bollinger, the quest for the cures. Uh, check on, uh, click on the truth about cancer on pharmacistben.com, and you'll, you'll go to, head over to a web page. Thank you so. So, so, so much, Ty. I appreciate everything you're doing. We'll talk again soon, my friend. Thank you, brother. Appreciate God it. God bless. Man. God bless, Ty. All right, that was Ty Bollinger, author of Cancer Step Outside the Box. Head over to pharmacistben.com. Click on the truth about cancer. You'll be taken to a web page. You can sign up to check out these wonderful webinars with all of these really neat doctors and researchers who uh, have some interesting things to say about cancer. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. Bye for now.